Hi, everybody. I'm Josh Welsh, president of Film Independent. Welcome to Film Independent Presents. Um, before we get started, I just want to thank Vision Media, uh, the HFPA, for making this program possible all year long. Thank you so much for your support. Um, I'm very excited to be here today to have a conversation with the filmmaking crew behind the incredible film, To Leslie. Uh, the director, Michael Morris. Hi, Michael. Hello. Uh, and from the cast, so honored to be joined by Andrea Riseborough, Mark Marin, Andre Royo, and Stephen Root. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having you. Be here. I love this film so much. I wish we were having dinner to talk about it. Um, but <laughs> I uh, can eat. You want me to eat? <laughs> if, if you want to eat and play guitar throughout, it's good. Um, good. But okay. I mean, I just let's start at the beginning, Michael. Um, how did this script, how did, how did you find the script and what, what drew you to it when you read it? Yeah, so uh, I, I was um, I was working and this is one of these strange things that, that came out of the blue. You know, you want to think, oh, I've known the writer for years and we talked about, no, uh, actually Ali, who is our casting director and is someone that I had worked with maybe seven years prior, uh, but hadn't seen or worked with since, out of the blue one night sent me a, an email saying i read this script and something about it uh, made me think of you and it's odd because it's a story on its on its face of it it's a story about a you know uh, an embattled single mother in west texas you know dealing with a lot of issues and being asked a lot of difficult questions and but as soon as i read it like it was i felt it i just completely felt the character in in my bones in a way that i now realize I had been looking to try and find for years. This is my, my first film. So I've been looking, I've been reading a ton of scripts, to be honest, and wanting to fall in love. It's a bit like in life, you want to fall in love. It doesn't always work that way, you know? Um, and I fell in love with this the moment I read it. So I think Leslie's story and the story of Leslie and her son and the people uh, in that orbit, I think there was, some, there was enough of me that I found in each one of the characters and each one of the, their relationships uh, that, that they discover or have with, with Leslie in the movie, that I could, that, that I, I instantly knew that this was a story, you know, that I, that I had to, I had to tell. I mean, you mentioned it's your first feature, but obviously you've been directing TV for many years and doing really remarkable work on shows like Bloodlines or Better Call Saul, where it feels like kind of meaty character driven work that um, this feels like a, I'm, I'm so excited you made stepped into doing features now and I hope there's lots more coming um but this does feel like a, a nice outgrowth of the work you've been doing um in television I have to say totally off topic that two of my favorite things that I've seen this year were two Leslie and episode nine of Better Call Saul which, you also directed, which is <laughs> Thank emotionally you. harrowing like you know yeah. incredible episode of that that show Thank so. you Thank you very much. I'm 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 really proud of that specific episode, actually. Um, but definitely, uh, I think I was really lucky, and I came out of theatre originally back in England and then in New York um, for a while, and joined this sort of television uh, party, as it were, just as it was exploding in a really good way. Just as we were starting to create shows, you know. Um, the Wire being actually the first one of these that I can re remember, like actively really remember creating shows that really started to get serious about character and about um, about uh, story, visual storytelling as well. And and in fact, it's my TV life has been wildly influential on this, not least because that's how I met Andrea and Owen. You know, uh, uh, we were doing Bloodline together uh, in the second season of that show, and I think. Um, all the aspects of television, I think, definitely inform the sort of character work that we're doing in this film, except I've got to say that um, there is something liberating about not having any format to be sort of beholden to. Do you know what I mean? And, and being able to tell a, a story uh, completely, you know, completely and without uh, without certain uh, benchmarks that you have to hit. And I got to say, it, it shows like Better Call Saul uh, and many, you know, loads, many others, Barry. God knows, you know, you're, you're freed from that a lot of the time because there's, there's a lot of wonderful artists in TV who are trying to break the conventions that a lot of, uh, we spent the last 20 years inventing. But even still, you know, an episode of television is a chapter in a longer story. And there's something really deeply satisfying, I think, about telling that whole story. 
Absolutely. Um, well, Andrea, so Michael alluded to the fact that you guys had worked together before, but what drew you to this project and, and to the character of Wesley specifically? Yeah, I've touched when on it a few times now. Well, I've touched on it a few times now. Um, it, it was kind of strange in the way that Michael and I met because I don't have a lot of experience in television at all. And so he, and because he was show running a show, I very much felt like I had, he was my director in many ways. And so I, I, I instantly gravitated toward him because he was the keeper of all information. And he had a sense of the, the large narrative landscape of the whole, this, this big, vast, sprawling thing that we were doing. Um, so when he brought me the script, I really, I, you know, I had, I had no idea until I read it what it was going to feel like, who she was going to be, and almost instantly, um, I thought this is a story we can really tell. And it's a story that so many of us have been touched by in one way or another. Um, and that was it, really. It's, it was very special to me that Ryan, our writer, had experienced something similar with his own mom. And this was, in a, in a sense, something he was giving her that she couldn't have in life. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a beautiful film and your performance is just unbelievably powerful and, and moving. And um, I talked to Michael about this on another occasion, but the, the opening few minutes of the film, I love, I, mean, I love the whole film, but those opening few minutes where you're establishing who this woman is and the world that she's coming from, it's so, well, it's, it's so economical and just like, the brevity and the way you set things up, but it's also so moving, like just those first few minutes, like seeing what happens when she wins the, the lottery ticket, seeing like the body language between you and your son when he's a little boy, like it, it, it just tells like a world, it really creates the world and this character so profoundly, so quickly. And I'm just, I don't know if you have anything to say about that segment of the film and how you approached it. Because the rest of the movie is all right. You have these longer scenes that really breathe, where you're in relationship with, you know, Mark's character or your son or or Stephen's character. But in that first part, you're just it's it's your face and like that scream you let out. It's like quick, quick shots. Well, yeah, as you know, in independent film, we approached it, you know, toward the end of the day with about five minutes, um, and it was a kick, kick scramble. Kick bollock scramble, is that what we say, Michael, in, in England? I can't remember the order of the kick bollock or the scramble, but anyway. Um, you know, we shot the film, was it 19 days that we shot the 19 film? 19 days, yeah. Yeah, 19 days. So, it, so, and there's something really liberating about that. I think always it's why I love independent film so much. It's, um, you're in six different places in one day, and each time you have to approach that, that place with, total abandon and um those early scenes where Leslie's whole life is a, is ahead of her really and she finally is accepted in her community in a way she, well she feels she's going to be accepted in her community because she can buy every round and there's sort of no amount of money she can spend or alcohol she can drink that's going to fill this this gaping hole inside of her and it all goes horribly wrong and so it and so it is of course when we were shooting that there was you know there's no there's no, no sense of that it's important for me not to bring a sense of that in I learned that from right. Mike Lee very early on he was the mm -hmm. first person that I worked with and he stressed the importance of what not to know and if you can retain that sort of magical space for yourself where you you can create that illusion, completely believe that you're 27 with a young son and right. about to, you know, take on the world, then then it happens. And and the the tragedy, of course, is that she didn't have any of the she wasn't equipped to make the most of a look. And one hundred ninety thousand dollars. What a terrible amount to win, <laughs> right? It's just enough to 
screw up your life really badly. Um, well, Andre and Mark, um, I love the relationship that the two of you have in that motel. And it's like, you know, throughout the film, you kind of enter these different worlds and the world that you guys create in that space was really beautiful. I'd love to hear both of you talk about how you approach that and, and also in practical terms, how you filmed it. Like, I don't know, I'm assuming with 19 days, you didn't have a lot of rehearsal time or, right, you're, you're just on the set and going, but um, uh, talk about how, how you how you built that world and that relationship. Yeah, Andre, talk about it. <laughs> well, I mean, I you know I, I love to talk, so I, I'll, I'll jump in and say that, you know, for me, it was just a lot of curiosity about that world because I know I, I'm not alone in, in trying to figure out when you're driving cross country and you see these kind of motels and you wonder how the fuck they stay in business. Like, I just don't get it. I see these small little motels and I wonder who stops there. How can they pay rent? Like how much, how much uh, foot traffic or traffic are they getting to uh, keep, keep the doors open? So I just, as, as an actor, I was excited to go in there. It's a world I've never been uh, immersed in. So I just, you know, I started looking at, you know, pulling over, walking around and, and visiting these uh, different uh, motels and short stay spots. And uh, I just enjoyed trying to see what being in there would feel like, what it would look like, how would it, uh, uh, how would it uh, help me shape the character. And then everything else was leaving it, leaving it into Michael's hands and my co-stars and just, and just playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think the way I approached it was just knowing that, you know, that uh, his character, uh, Royal, had, you know, gone off the rails with drugs and, and not come back. And, you know, he was kind of this, you know, weirdo, but a good hearted weirdo, but not really capable of, uh, of, you know, a few basic things. So I somehow kind of fit that puzzle i could do these basic things and you know kind of run interference and 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 kind of manage reality a bit for this guy um but you know it, it was just uh we had a good time you know what i mean it, like i i like being in a position to react to chaos i grew up with it so i yeah it was really my job in this movie was to uh right. in my role was to somehow kind of react and uh but you know be grounded in the face of these uh chaotic emotional characters um and you know we had a good time and you know the setting in there i didn't realize that when every time i shoot on sets like that because if you shoot tv in this town you're always going to end up in the desert at one of those fucking hotels you know <laughs> one or the other and you know when i got there i'm like are there there's always like two or three people living there and yeah. <laughs> but when I got there, I was like, is this office? I thought like the office was like actually set up for whoever actually worked at the place. Yeah. And, uh, and Michael was like, no, we, we, we had set deck do that. I'm like, oh my God, that was really uh, amazing. Cause I was job. like half careful not to mess things up. Cause I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want the owner to get um, upset with me. <laughs> you don't want the owner to get upset with you. You're right there. Especially <laughs> that. But I would say that just to echo something that, that, uh, that, that, that these guys have said, this is one of the things that I think I did love about the movie and hearing Andre say like, who who's who lives at these places like who goes to these places i think this movie for me anyway like the film can do this thing of making something invisible visible right mm -hmm. but when you point a camera at it and the lives that we the time we spend with leslie with sweeney with royal with dutch and nancy everybody these are people that that sometimes are invisible or considered invisible people who are not like out there shaking a flag changing the world you know running races and and you know even the setting this is a there's a freeway and a and a train track next to this place these people are constantly passing through pass just passing through she says at one point that's nice this is not a place you stop and uh, and i was really excited by the idea of stopping here mm -hmm. But what's what's amazing about this movie? Uh, it, my wife just saw it uh, yesterday at the at the CAA screening, and and what she said about it, I think, lives true. It, this movie lives in the wide. It lives it, it lives to let you watch these characters. It's so generous that the the camera stays on these characters 
such a long time. There's not dialogue. I think the first scene that I do with, with AJ, we're in the truck. There's no dialogue in it, but you know exactly what's going on uh, between these characters. You know how they're connected uh, through just living in the wide and uh, uh, no dialogue. And, and that's what I think is remarkable about this film is it, uh, Michael was so generous in giving everybody time to just live in the film. I, Stephen, I was going to ask you about that exact scene because I completely agree with the way you describe it, but also it's your performance, right? I mean, you and Leslie both, like that moment when she walks out and you're in the truck, not a word is said. And right. I immediately know who these people are and like some pretty clear sense of their history. And you are just, you are here, you're doing it, you are pissed off. And like the way things, when you get back to the house, like you're laying out, you know, the conditions under which she's going to stay there. All of that, it's, I mean, it's in the writing. I love that, that there's not really, you don't have to, you don't have to say anything. You, you exactly. feel it all. Yeah. You know, AJ is so good anyway. And it's, it's, it was just lovely to be able to do. Yeah. I, it's you know I also found through, through none of nothing obviously it's a nothing is played for laughs but there's a lot of humor I mean I found myself laughing and Stephen in your scenes with I mean I don't know there's just there's a ton of humor throughout like when like when Leslie you're in the house and Andrew when you're in the house and um, the guy comes up to the window trying to lure you out when the campfire's going like I don't know there's just something so absurd about that mm. and the scenes between you and Mark and or, or Mark and Andre are also like there's something sweet and funny running throughout a lot of it that is a really yeah. interesting color, given how like basically dark this story is. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I think, don't you, that, that um, I was really lucky and, uh, and, and you could say smart, but I, I'll go with lucky instead, um, that everybody in the movie is so adept at humor, everybody, everybody across the board. Um, and I think that's, that, that's one of the things that can make, um, Mobile lived in is when there's a little color of humor in there because without that I feel like you can get in towards melodrama without really even wanting to that you know it's like having complementary colors when you're, you're you're painting do you know what I mean you need to have you need to have uh, con a little bits of contrast and some of my favorite moments just personally when I watch the film again are those kind of moments of levity because they're they're small but they're present because otherwise, like, what are we doing it for? You know, what is like when, when when I say she's back for her suitcase? Yeah, <laughs> oh man, she's back for her suitcase. Yeah. And well, th so much of of a character like Leslie, you know, when it's not tragic, it's you know, it's it there, it's pretty funny, sadly, but yeah. it is. And yeah. there's no sort, there's no kind of laugh, there's no fuller, deeper laughter than that at a wake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And everybody's in orbit around this incredibly effervescent human who's addictive in of us in herself. And, and also, yeah, yeah, her whole struggle is just to, you know, figure out how to take on the responsibility to clean rooms. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. <laughs> Thank the Lord I did it. Oh, I'm well. a maid, she says, which I love as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing. She's so connected. In so many ways, she's so connected to reality because she's she's in touch with the idea that perhaps nobody's life should be the day in, day out subservience of cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, and she's also aware she's worth more than that, but it comes with a lot of victimhood. You know, and also, you're a raw nerve because you're sober. Yeah. Newly oh, sober. I mean, yeah. Just so you're like feeling everything. Like a human who's inside out, been turned right. inside mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Mark Sweeney is such a sweet guy. Like, not that he's just a sweet guy, but there's like a, he's so, he's not like you described him as the person, you know, a chaos bouncing off of him, which I definitely see, but with leslie there's like this real warmth and uh desire to understand like she keeps fucking up and you're about to kick her out but like there's just a a sweetness in your character that's really uh, lovely to watch um and i'm curious like in as you were doing those scenes building that throughout filming with with andrea like just to, 
assuming again that you didn't have rehearsal time, like how did you find that relationship? Was it just like in the actual filming of it or did you come in sort of? With, well, I mean, as soon as like, I just kept uh, pretty open, you know, and, uh, and, and I realized early on that, you know, that I was there to, uh, I mean, I'm there to help her, you know, in the movie. And on some level, uh, I'm there to uh, also support her as a performer. So the codependency happened naturally on screen and off. <laughs> and, and I, you know, I was able to find that place where, you know, I, I was taken with her. But I think it was, it was kind of twofold in that, you know, I had feelings for her. But I think I was also trying to, to correct the past. So... And those two things, you, you know, e equal a kind of patience and, and, and kindness. But it, it's also, you know, I feel there are moments where it's a little dangerous for that guy. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you don't really know if, if it's, uh, I don't think he's going to be taken advantage of, but it feels like at some point he could be hurt. And it didn't really yeah. pan out that way. Mm -hmm. Almost. I yeah. Mean, I think I agree with you, Mark. I think he, he, he allows himself to get hurt, which is pretty brave when you've spent the last however many years it's been living in this motel and basically keeping away from danger, you know what I mean, emotionally. And he's, he puts himself out there in the movie. And it's hard to avoid that, that deep regret that comes with, or the, the regretful thoughts that come with being around somebody like Leslie, where you think, if I just loved harder, if I just, it's, so when presented with somebody else, I mean, he's Sweeney's character has just gone through a relationship and then not been able to um, sustain it. And then he's presented with somebody else who has a drinking problem. It's, it, it's, it's just almost irresistible. Well, yeah, especially if, if that's what's irresistible to you. You know, you, get, you can't fight your wiring. Mm -hmm. You know, you can try, but it, it gets pretty boring and you probably don't. Uh, enjoy your life much. <laughs> yeah. Stephen, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, so Alice and Janney's not here, but like your relationship with her and that world that you all inhabit. Again, so like just established without any backstory or explanation, but a totally believable group of people, like whatever's going on there. Um, I believe these people are friends, hang out, ha have the jobs that they have you know, until Leslie comes in and stirs it up. But um, yeah, it, it, amazing it, it was easy. It was easy with with those actors and with with Michael just letting it be, you know, um, that that little fire sequence that we did was all pretty much um, improv, wasn't it, Michael? Largely. I mean, I think we hit the, the, the main points, but that, yeah, I think you guys yeah, definitely lived in there. And and we already felt like a family doing that, doing scenes like that. I think one of my favorite scenes is is where you just see Janie and I through the window, and she just pops me in the chest, um, uh, like they would do every day. <laughs> like I don't like what you said, and <laughs> just pops him, uh, and that's family. That right there, that's that's boom, that's connection right there. And uh, and that was that was easy to do with this quality, amazing actors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, to that point, I think I think um, one of the things that this that, that Ryan built into the script, which I think to answer your first question of why why fall in love with this script, is he he understood in inherited like intrinsically that so much storytelling happens without describing or narrating what it is that you're arguing about, right? So there's so much history in all of these scenes. The kitchen scene with Stephen and Alison and, and, and Andrea, we really don't explain what all the what all what's going on. You know, we see them react to each other. We understand there's history. But apart from a very, very sort of obtuse line, like we put more into this place than she gave us, you know, there isn't really a lot of time spent on explaining why it is that they're helping, explaining why it is they're angry with her. And, and, and so to, to, to do that, for me, you need a script that allows, allows the story to, to come when it comes. Like we learn much later after we meet Andre's character, what happened with Andre, we, with, with Royal. We meet, uh, you know, it's only then that we really learn about Sweeney's backstory. But to do that, you need to have actors who can, who can 
hold on to what whatever's going on in that silence. So that was that was really critical. I have a question. I guess this is for Michael and maybe Andrea, but I w- I'm curious about sort of what the set is like for you, Michael, as a as a director. What kind of environment you're creating on the set, and and Andrea, for you, I'm specifically I'm thinking about this. Right, there are a lot of scenes that are at a kind of fevered emotional pitch where you're just like you are. As I think Mark said, like a completely raw nerve, fully exposed, and you know the the scene is going off. And I'm just curious to hear both of you talk about like. What do you create on set to enable that to happen where you're right? Are you doing like long takes with like kind of just letting Andrea go in those moments or? Well, let me get the other answer first. What's the environment like? And then, uh, so uh, for a start, obviously we had no, we really, really had no time. 19, 19 days we keep saying, but it's like, it, that's brutal with location moves and, you know, um, moving all over the place. And plus, we didn't have we didn't have an infrastructure that was big enough to to kind of like deny the sun, right? So when the sun started to go down, like that's it. Um, so we were always moving. We were also shooting on thirty five millimeter film, which just uh, which was wonderful. And I will it, it's it's one of the things that I'm so happy that we that we were able to do. But it brings a whole other set of challenges in terms of you know um, rolling out. I was thinking, Andrew, the other day, just how many great scenes and performances were stopped by rollouts it's not, not something we deal with on digital anymore um to answer your question it was also high covid the highest of high covid mm-hmm. so our set was very small and there are a couple of things that are good about that because the set becomes very very it becomes like the cockpit of the plane it's not you know a, a place where people casually walk through or talk or uh, you know, like hanging out on their phones it's a it became again a very special place i think it was quiet it was usually quite calm, no matter what was going on outside with people scrambling to get everything done. And we never put marks on the floor, which is, you know, we, we, we tried Larkin Seipel, our amazing DP, and I tried to light the space so that there wasn't so much uh, ultra control over, uh, you know, where someone had to stand in order to deliver their lines, right? So we tried to create an atmosphere that was um, ready for whatever it was that, that, that Leslie was going to bring. Right. And I remember very clearly our very first day of shooting, the first scene we did had no words. It was Leslie in the bar in that, it, it, there's a little bar montage of her drinking near the beginning with the Freddie King song playing in the background. And I think we all learned very quickly from that very first thing, how explosive Leslie was going to be in this movie and how explosive Andrea could be uh, playing her. And the second scene we shot, I believe, was... The, the opening scene really of the film where she's being kicked out of, uh, of her place and she's yelling at everybody and grabbing us. So those two scenes back to back, we understood the kind of amplitude of this character, of what, what she was going to give us. So um, I think that set the tone for just allowing a space where, um, where, that, could, where, where that performance could happen. Andrea, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Sort of. Um, I'm, I'm not. I, I've, sometimes performing's fun in in a certain in a certain you know if you're doing some like cabaret or something like that, <laughs> or or some me- meaty piece of Shakespeare that's you know quite entertaining that has words like cuckold in it. Sometimes performance can be fun, but in terms of in in terms of film. Um, I always try and really veer away from that area. So the more it can feel real, that it's just a totally real situation and between action and cut, nothing interrupts that, you know, um, the better. We were really isolated, which was, which afforded us a lot as much as it took away. It afforded me a lot internally because I was actually surrounded by a lot of people, but very disconnected from them. So, and and which is exactly how Leslie feels her whole life: this painful loneliness, surrounded by people in smoky bars, you know. Um, but it was really, you know, stepping into all of the scenes, stepping into the motel, stepping into the house with Stephen and Alison. It was. At this level, you know, working with people like this, it's so wonderful because it's just like 
being in a constant playground, as Andre said, it's not, it's something that we've prepared for our whole lives as actors and, you know, in many ways. Um, and so stepping into that and stepping into that house with Stephen and Alison is like stepping into a cold, a pissing cold shower of rain. You know, it, it just <laughs> feels absolutely uninviting. <laughs> and that's because they're, you know, titanic talents. Um, and I find that more and more with, with actors I love working with just kind of just get in there, you know, you just, you just start and go. And those were some, again, those, yeah. yeah, those are some of the first scenes that that we shot, as as Michael said. And I think I remember actually feeling a bit on set, slightly feeling like the crew hadn't quite bargained for this. There was a feeling, <laughs> forgive me, there was a feeling amongst the, I, I could feel there was like, oh goodness, we're spending the next three weeks with this live wire <laughs> and because everybody's known everybody has a leslie or has behaved like a leslie or you know it it, it triggers it triggers everyone massively yeah. um as so many of the crew members at the end came up and yeah. told me stories about their parents and their family members and yeah. And, yeah. and said how grateful they were to work on it because it had helped them process a lot of stuff yeah. you know um but it was like you know in a in a at a peak it's like being around a banshee you know she's it, it was um she's intoxicating mm. character mm-hmm. yeah well the scenes between you and owen teague as your son are just so incredible i mean oh my god so moving and, and just see, seeing that guy, like, just seeing how like a young person deals with that banshee and you know you're his mom he loves you but he's just not gonna do it i mean it's really Mm. And just the way you two play off each other was so beautiful. I love and, it. And we we had that history because we because we'd already played mother and son before on Bloodline with Michael. Wow. So wow. And we hadn't seen each other for the same amount of time that Leslie and her son hadn't seen each other for. And so uh, when when I saw him again, he'd grown up. He didn't have a chaperone. He was a young man. <laughs> he had his own life. He'd moved to New York. You know. Uh-huh. Um, I was presented with an entirely different person, with somebody who's a, 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 was always an incredibly competent actor, but also was, and it's important to remember this on set, is also a child. You know, he was mm-hmm. a child the first time I worked with him. Um, and so now to to sort of be able to enjoy going head to head with him and this was just, it was so rewarding. It really, really was. He's a lovely, lovely guy. Well, thank you all so much for for talking with me and film independent about it congrats on the film i love it so much everyone needs to go see it um and uh thank you all again um thank you pleasure to thank talk you. to you thank you so much yeah thank, thank you, you to everyone very very much. Independent. <laughs> thank you. bye-bye everybody it was great. Bye, everyone. thank you bye. 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 Bye.